Hey there, Nick Trinitakis here. In this video, we're going to go over creating and maintaining a changelog, and specifically, we're going to go over the tips and guidelines provided by keepachangelog.com. This is something I've been following recently now for my newer projects, and basically, even my older projects, when it comes time to cutting a new release, I've been going back and changing my changelog file to basically follow all the tips here. So keepachangelog.com is not a tool or anything that you need to install. It's really just a set of guidelines that, uh, you know, makes a changelog good. So there's totally uh, tons of different ways that you can create a changelog, right? You can just put a list of every single git commit in there and call it a day. You can even do that programmatically and have like a fancy GitHub action to do all this. But honestly, where's the value in that, right? Like if I want to see a complete list of git commits, well, I can just go up, go up on GitHub and take a look there or clone the repo down and take a look at that on the command line. That doesn't really help me as a human being. You know, as a human being, I want to see all sorts of different changes and like what types of changes happened, right? Did we add something? But did it change something? Is something getting deprecated, removed, fixed, security issues? So what's really cool about keepachangelog.com is they give you this systematic approach to organize a changelog that will work for basically any project, right? Because it doesn't matter if you're developing an Ansible role or you're creating a custom Python script to do, you know, whatever, whatever, you know, chances are you're going to have these types of categories of changes, right? You're going to be adding things, changing things, removing things things, et cetera, et cetera. And when it comes to like the guiding principles here, right? They also say like change logs are made for humans, not machines. There should also be an entry for every single version. The same types of changes should be grouped up. These are the groups over here. Then, you know, all of the versions and sections should be linkable. And this actually ends up being quite useful. So for example, if I jump up over to here, I have this open source project, Flask Static Digest, where I am implementing this pattern here from Keep a Changelog. So they give you like a little boilerplate if I scroll back up here, where you can just copy paste this into your project just to begin with. And that's kind of what we see here, right? We give a link back to them because that's the following, uh, that's the format that we're following. But the basic idea here, right? We have like an unreleased section where this could be commits that are on the master branch or whatever your main branch is, but you didn't quite cut a release yet. This is really, really useful to know if you're the user of the software, right? Like imagine if you're working on a web framework and you know, the new version isn't out yet, but there's a couple of things on master that are pretty interesting to you. So, you know, maybe you are, uh, building your project off of master. So you could be implementing those things side by side based on the change log. So when the new release is cut, you are ready to go. But notice here too, that all of these are linked. So for example, if I go to the 0.21 and I click that, then it shows a nice side by side comparison of what changed between these two versions, right? Between, you know, 0 0.20 and 0 0.21. And we can see here like a side-by-side -side view of what got added and removed, et cetera, et cetera. Very useful to have. And then, you know, we can see that in this case, it was a type of fix, right? We wanted to make sure, you know, uh, Flask's static URL path is used if you have a host URL set, because I did add a brand new feature right before that, which was giving a CDN support just by adding this new config option. But again, that's like low level Flask details, but you can see here, you know, like I added some functionality and then I realized going back like, huh, you know what? I forgot to do something pretty stupid here. Let me just go and release a new release here. We can see even on the same day where this time it was like fixing something. And in this case, there's only like added and fixed here because most of my releases are pretty small. And honestly, this library uh, is not super complicated. So there's not like a ton of different things, but we can see here too on the very first release, like added everything, right? Because uh, it's the initial release, right? Like the brand new release. And this file itself is just Markdown. So if I jump over to my code editor here, we can see that exact file here in Markdown format. We can see it's, you know, in my GitHub uh, Flask Static Digest folder. And yeah, it's just Markdown. And if we take a look here at the bottom of the file, then these are all the references to the URLs to make, you know, like that side-by-side -side comparison work on GitHub, right? We have uh, just links basically to tags. And then when it comes to, well, for the first one, right? Uh, because there is nothing to compare on the very first release, but for the other ones, uh, GitHub has this compare endpoint where you can just pass in two different tag numbers and you can get the difference between that. And then for the unreleased section here, we are just comparing the latest tag to whatever the head is, right? Like the current commit on master in this case, because that's the, the name of the branch. But if you have a main branch or whatever, that's what it would be. So yeah, not super complicated to set up. And you know, what's really cool too about this setup is, you know, let's say that I did have something a little bit more involved and I had all sorts of, you know, fixes and changes in this unreleased section. Well, when it comes time to cutting a new release, I just need to copy this here and, you know, paste that down here and then change this to be a new number, put in the date and then like, you know, bring the nothing yet back up, up to unreleased and that's it, right? Like the change log already is basically created for me for that release. I just need to uh, shuffle around some version numbers, you know, add the thing down here, 
for, for the link and then uh, you're good to go. So I really do like this format and yeah, I've been using this for all my newer projects and every time I go back to cut a new release for an older project, I've been going back and just changing the format to look more like this because you know, this uh, is another project here, an Ansible role for Docker. This project is quite a bit more long lived. I've been doing this one for a couple of years now, I think. Uh, yeah, 2016. But I wasn't following that keep a change log format back then. So I kind of just came up with my own little formatting here. Like I still like the idea of having, you know, the version number there and the release date, initial release. And I still wasn't doing git commits in here because that would be like really annoying, right? Like as a developer, I don't want to see a list of git commits. I want to see like actual features. But you can see here, you know, everything is clumped up together. It's hard to tell what's been added or removed or deprecated or, you know, things like that, like backwards incompatible changes. You know, I guess that falls under uh, deprecation but you can see here too, you know, once I have uh, quite a few things here, like this one over release was pretty big. You know, it's just like a wall of text there. Wouldn't it be nice if that were categorized? And maybe one day I'll go back and organize all this stuff. But uh, you can see here too, you know, as uh, some of the re releases got a little bit bigger, I started using my own terminology here, like features and variables and stuff like that. And that's a little bit specific to Ansible, like Ansible variables. But, you know, I could totally port this over to keep a change log. And again, I will one day. And you can also see here too, I started calling out like backwards incompatible changes. You know, looking back, it would have been great just to follow this format from day one. So this video is kind of a short one, but it's more of an awareness to keepachangelog.com. And if you have any open source projects or, you know, products or libraries or whatever, then uh, it is a good idea to keep a change log because it keeps people happy, right? It's so easy just to jump into a single file to see all the list of changes there. And uh, if you're a developer, then that is a great resource to have. But also, you know, there's a whole nother level of change logs here as well, right? Like maybe customer facing ones where you might have like a slash change log on a website, right? Like if you have a SaaS service or something like that, that can be also very interesting. But again, you know, it totally depends on your SaaS app. If it's not made for developers, you probably might have like blog posts or whatnot, but that's sort of maybe a topic for another video. In this case, for keeping the change log itself, yeah, by all means, uh, let me know if you're gonna end up using this pattern. If you're using something else, uh, let us know below in the comments. And if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really helps. And on that note, thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video.